I can go and look and find almost any of these classics as sure. a PDF online, sure. but the quality of reproduction of the images is very poor. I think there's something visceral about seeing the real thing. You know, this is the real life thing that our predecessors themselves read and touched. The library's really been at the heart of NIAM since its founding in 1847. Every year when we have our annual meeting of the fellows and honor our 30-year fellows, so many of them, the stories they tell us about the strength of their connection to NIAM really centers on their early experiences in the library. In the beginning, the fellows were really interested in building a library of contemporary materials that they could use for their own research. Over time, of course, that collection has turned into really a fabulous historical collection in the history of medicine. The strengths of the collection are really in 16th, 17th, and 18th century history of medicine, primarily Western medicine. We also have about 85% of the medical Americana that were published starting in the 16th century and going through until the early 19th century. The creation of the new Center for the History of Medicine and Public Health really recognizes the value of our collections. And we made a strategic decision a couple of years ago to really focus on the unique features of NIAM's library, which is its historical collections. We brought in world-class experts from all over the country, and they really affirmed the idea of moving ahead to have a center really focusing on the history of medicine and public health and also the history of the book. We are thrilled to have the leadership of Lisa O'Sullivan and the kinds of ideas which we think are really going to make a huge difference in the awareness of the public about the importance of, of history in contemporary medicine and also excite people about the idea of coming here to the New York Academy of Medicine and sharing both our collections and our wonderful building. The center consists of our library and historical collections and the Gladys Brooks Conservation Laboratory. The history of the book as an object is extremely important to us. We're very fortunate to have the Gladys Brooks Book and Paper Conservation Laboratory on site. The laboratory and its conservators are rightfully renowned for the care they take of our collections. The New York Academy of Medicine has a long-standing commitment to the care of its collections. NIAM established its library preservation program in 1982, and today, 30 years later, the Gladys Brooks Lab is an award-winning lab with responsibility for the care of over 550,000 items. Conservators in the Gladys Brooks Lab have responsibility for all aspects of care of the collection, including both preventive and interventive care. Being a conservator at NIAM is an amazing privilege, but it's also a huge responsibility. Many of the items we have in our collection are one of a kind. During treatment, conservators make every effort to retain all parts of the original binding and to use materials and techniques that are both non-invasive and reversible. Digital technologies provide amazing potential to give access to our collections, however they are not inherently that stable. Every time a new technological format is created, you need to migrate your data over. However, books, in contrast, have demonstrated over many centuries that they are an extremely stable and reliable way of storing knowledge. We have wonderful things in our collection. Strengths of the collection are the history of public health, epidemic diseases, the history of cardiology, anatomical atlases, women's medicine, dermatology, surgery, and cookery. Highlights of the collection include a 9th century manuscript of the earliest cookbook in the West, Apicius de Re Cocinaria, Andreas Vesalius's Fabric of the Human Body, first published in 1543, and William Harvey's De Mono Quartus, published in 1628, which describes the heart as pump at the center of the circulatory system. One of my favorite books from the collection is a very, very small book called The Fruits of Philosophy, or A Private Companion for Adult People. This book was published in 1832. The book was written by Charles Knowlton, and it's pocket size. It's really a family planning guide for women. 
the reason that there are so few that survive is because I think that aside from the copies that were destroyed, that people just used them until they fell completely apart. Every time I come in the door with a guest, Arlene Shainer always pulls out a particular book with an example of four-edge painting. It's so gratifying to see people who really have no idea about our collection or the excitement of really looking at these historical objects, to see the look on their face when they see something that really strikes a chord in their own interests or in their own personal history. In 2012, the Rare Book Reading Room was named in honours of the Doctors Barry and Bobby Kohler through the generosity of the Lefrac Family Foundation and Trust. The Lefrac gift is being used to upgrade the environmental conditions in the reading room. Stepping into the space of the Rare Book Reading Room of the New York Academy of Medicine is a transporting experience. Surrounded by beautifully crafted wood shelves and worn leather and vellum books, we are awed by the breadth of information and moved by a reverence for history. The New York Academy of Medicine, under Dr. Buford's leadership, provides scholars, students, and the general public with a treasure trove of jewels. One of the great things about our collection is that you can see the way that the history of the Academy and the history of public health in New York come together. Early fellows of the Academy were instrumental in getting the Department of Health off the ground. We want to be the place where people can come together to really spend some time looking at these issues. We want to be a convening space that can create interdisciplinary connections and new perspectives. We have a number of programs we're very excited about. We teach the Junior Fellows Program, helping middle school students with an interest in health careers, develop their research skills. What do you think is the most effective approach now for getting good sleep if you really can't sleep through the night? Well, I think that you should just start, the, I think, in my opinion, I think you should just change your habits because mainly like every other treatment has a side effect to it, but if you change your habits, you're controlling your own body. History gives us that sense, that perspective of how things change and a reminder that things will keep changing. We're living through history now. The innovations and new technologies of today are the history of the future. I'm in love with this library and also the rare book room. Of course, you know I wrote a book about my dad, a biography of my father, and I could not have written it without the resources that the New York Academy of Medicine offered me. So I, I have a real love affair with this library. We welcome all of you to become a part of this tradition and to help us develop this new Center for the History of Medicine and Public Health.